everyone. Please welcome the second update of this autumn, Firebirds. Get ready to see reworked locations and improved visual effects, new game mechanics, and of course, a whole heap of fresh vehicles. Let's start with the new graphics. We've added support for DirectX 12 that allows us to enhance our game with some impressive new features. One of those features is RTX. It brings major improvements in all light reflected by glass and water, as well as shadows cast by objects. We've also implemented new anti-aliasing types, an improved version of DLSS and TSR. Major improvements have been made to numerous types of effects, aircraft afterburners, fuel leaks, missile launch fumes, sparks made by impacts on hard surfaces, movement across all types of terrain, pouring rain, water streams off roofs, and so on. We've also added the much-anticipated air vortices that you can see during sharp maneuvers. In addition to that, we've reworked the visuals of some airfields in high-rank battles to make your return to base even more satisfying. There's new dynamic deformation of cars used as decoration on ground maps. All railway carriages are now movable as well. Next, we made it possible to set up your radar before you join the battle, so you won't need to do it again every time after you spawn. Our next highlight is the updated Abandoned Factory map. No changes to gameplay here, but almost all objects and surfaces now enjoy new, more detailed geometry and improved textures. Make sure to check out the new looks. Tank destroyers, ATGM carriers, and SAMs can now build ammunition boxes in ground battles that make it possible to reload in any part of the map. This change allows you to double your ammunition pool and use it while positioning anywhere you like. Test flights now offer a choice of locations and target types, as well as two spawn types, at various altitudes in the air or on the runway. The test flight now also has a special area with an anti-air system that will attack you if you get close. You can use this to practice dodging missiles. For ground modes, we've developed a new mechanic that allows you to replay shots that you've fired at enemies or shots that you've taken. It can be launched using a special button in the hangar after a match to show you a simulation of any hit from that battle and provide you with a clearer picture of any complicated cases. We hope this addition will help clarify any misunderstandings and help you improve your skills. And the honor to open the parade of new vehicles belongs to one of the most versatile aircraft in history. The leading fighter bombers of the 21st century, the American F-15E Strike Eagle and the Soviet Russian Su-34. Their advanced radar systems and huge air-to-air -air arsenals help them achieve air superiority, while for CAS, both planes are way ahead of the competition. They have a huge number of hardpoints and can boast the ability to carry munitions with basically every type of guidance in the game. Another notable new plane is the world's first stealth aircraft, the F-117 Nighthawk. It's designed to have a lower radar cross-section, so enemy radar might have a harder time detecting it. The armament of this attack aircraft is limited to just two internal hardpoints, only visible before launch. This update also brings a number of new helicopters. Here's one of the newest versions of a legendary Soviet chopper, the Mi-8 AMTSH VN. It can boast new, more powerful engines and an advanced targeting system. Its high payload allows it to bring quite an impressive amount of weaponry to the battlefield. Another great heli is the South African modification of the Mi-24, the Super Hind. This version can boast a cannon in the front, ZT-3A2 ATGMs, and a cool-looking camouflage. Several new anti-air systems are getting ready to defend the skies. The Soviet Asa AKM has guided missiles that can repel incoming hostile aircraft at ranges of up to 10 kilometers. A new addition to lower ranks is the American T-77E1, armed with 650 cal Browning machine guns. With this many barrels and two glass housings, this vehicle scores high for unusual looks. Another new ground vehicle is the Soviet Object 140. On the outside, it looks similar to the T-62 and the T-55, but it's armed with a unique 100mm cannon. Its main shell is a powerful capped APHE round that can penetrate up to 290 millimeters of armor. The German ground tech tree receives some reinforcements, a unique armored car called the Lux. Thanks to its high speed and a 20 millimeter autocannon with high elevation angles, it's a mighty opponent for light vehicles and aircraft. Speaking of light vehicles, you might want to check out the British FV-107 Scimitar. 
It's armed with a 30mm cannon that some might recognize from the Fox and the Warrior. Only this vehicle comes with a compact tracked platform that can move equally fast forward and in reverse. The seas and oceans of War Thunder are also receiving new vessels. The French Navy is now led by the Dunkirk battleship. One of the key features is the placement of its main caliber guns. Eight 330mm cannons are found in two four-barrel turrets in the ship's fore. This unconventional design allows the ship to fire without exposing its vulnerable side. As always, this is far from all the new things we are adding. Make sure to check out the HMS Repulse Battlecruiser, the Pakistani MI-35M, the French Mirage 2000D RMV, and an entire new line of Dutch Leopard 2s. The full change log is available on our official website. Share your thoughts on the update in the comments. See you soon!